Hey, left right out here. Hey, I, it's not really a formal video or anything, but I wanted to address something. Uh, I've been doing a whole bunch of other things, so I haven't really done a video. It's not like a lot of people watch this anyway, but hopefully you like and subscribe, and I'll be able to get into some, you know, delve into some of these topics. First off, let's talk about gold and silver markets. We're busting through a lot of resistance. We're gaining support. The gold gold itself is well over $2,000 an ounce, and it looks like that level, which I don't pay attention to the price. I know that's an asset. That's how I like to save. I'm not saying that you should, but it is interesting to see it break above that level. The silver mar silver market is even more interesting. You know, I seen it touch where 28, or, you know, it's solidly over 26, and uh, God only knows where it's going to go, but I save in those, and those assets are are valued to me that is those are that's money and whatever the dollar is that's just a measuring stick on the weakness of the dollar but anyway that's the two cool things i've been watching and then of course my gold stocks which i do i'm not saying do that but i'm almost got called out of them because i sell calls you know i do covered calls on these things and i was really wanting to hold on to them i almost got called out of it almost and thankfully we got to pull back i actually want to pull back in gold because i want to buy more i want to buy more silver i want to buy more of these um, gold stocks, but you know, I might not get that chance, but it pulled back a little bit and hopefully I can just hold on to the shares that I own without getting called out and I'll sell another call. And, and I accidentally did it two months. Usually I only sell calls within a month. So the time decay works in my favor, but that's a whole nother strategy. We can get into options. If somebody wants to, you can actually comment on this video or whatever, and I can get into some option strategies because it's very simplistic. I try to keep it simple. Um, I've made money playing options pretty, uh, you know, sophisticatedly, but then I've also lost money. So there's, there's ways to do it where you can kind of hedge yourself and, and be able to make a little extra income. But anyway, let's get in this Tommy, Tom, Tommy, whatever, Tommy Loren thing. Cause that is what I wanted to talk about because it's very, it's very interesting. You know, I agree with some of what she said. If you haven't seen it, just Google it. There's a plenty of commentary on it. Um, so I'm not seeing anything new, but I watched it and I, there's some guys that I watched that, uh, they had some commentary and I got to listen to it and it's pretty alarming to me, even though I, I've seen her on Fox news and, and the blaze or whatever. And, um, I particularly, you know, I think she's a little, I don't know. And I, we agree on pol politically probably like 75% of the time, but when she had her arguments for this stuff, right. Her arguments on topics that we might even agree on just don't feel a very there's not like a whole lot of depth in those there's not a whole lot of thought it's just like a i don't know she has a she's that's just what she that's just what she is she hasn't really really thought out these things and come up with con, you know con, conclusive philosophical arguments and that's why i can never i never really found her all that i found her physically attractive but you know personally but um I don't think she understands economics to, to a greater extent besides like personal finance wise, or maybe the, the micro when it talks to, you know, yourself, but she definitely understand, doesn't understand why the federal reserve holding interest rates down to zero is bad or, you know, federal budget deficits <laughs> in relation to that. And, and the gold silver ratio and gold dollar ratio and all that other just, she doesn't understand that. But anyway, when she talks about like dudes and uh, that's where it got me because she was basically calling us all trash, right? Well, hey, you know what? I here's what I have to say about that. Anyway, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of crappy dudes out there, but you know what? I found more scandalous is the women. The women appear, appear to be more scandalous to me. You know how many times I wish I was wrong, like at this age where I'm at, and guys like me in the mid thirties. I mean, women are coming to, to us, and you know, I wanted a family and stuff when I was younger. And it never happened. There's women that have been cheated on. It took me a while to learn and self-reflect and become an actual man. Now that I'm there, I see the, how all these women are coming to date me. They're super. They're either super desperate. They got a whole bunch of stuff wrong mentally that's going on. But a lot of that ties into this games that they were playing when they were in their 20s. And if you, I mean, and all the lies and deceitfulness, and I'm not saying they all do that. This is a general statement from what I've seen, and I've dated all strata of women, whether it come from poor families, broken families, to um, you know, solid, solid two-parent households where the family lives on the same street, to women that are are from millionaires, you know. But and they all have. It seems like they all uh, 
in this day and age with social media and everything, they all have this, they suffer from a, an oversupply of men to the point, I, it sounds counterintuitive, but they don't, they're, it's almost harder for them to select the solid dudes. They end up s selecting more of, I don't know, they want to play. They want to play. So when they get somebody, anything happens, they start looking around. It's, I guess you refer to that as the monkey branch, right? So they start looking around, and they are always got their feelers out. Anything bad happens, they, nobody wants to work through anything anymore. So they always got their feelers out. They might have, I remember one chick, she had five or six guys she was dating with me. I was like, I, how the hell, hell do you even remember what we do? And I was like, I'm not taking this. This is ridiculous. And I've seen it, every, every girl that I've talked to her comes after me. Like, I've seen it. There's, they, she's got like a, a machine gun of text messages coming on there uh, from a bunch of dudes, thirsty dudes, beta cucks or whatever you want to call them. And granted, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. What it bothers me is the character that shows of the girl that's coming after me that we're dating. And it kind of puts me off, you know. So I, then I don't take, another thing is if they try to sleep with you too. So, I mean, you think that that's what dudes want. Yeah, you know, girls choose who they want to sleep with and guys get it when they can, you know, but at the same time, it's like you get put in this category if you just, if that's all you're kind of looking for. I had a girl that she, granted I broke it off, but she was trying to sleep with me all the, you know, first date. She's thinking, oh, well, that's not a bad thing. Well, it is if you're trying to look for somebody that you want to start a family with or whatnot. There's a lot of other issues. Like once you've delved into it, you know there's a lot of other issues in there that, uh, that are occurring. Granted, she was seeing a therapist about it, or about, not that, but about a lot of other things that, because, uh, what she done, but she'd admit, admitted that she spent most of her 20s and she was still in her 20s, right? That she was, you know, out sleeping around and doing all that. And I was like, well, you know, I kind of give her a chance to, hey, at least you meant it. But at the same time, should I? No, that's just part of my cuckiness from back in the day, showing. But I ended up just casting her aside. No hard feelings or anything. It's just that you got to get your stuff right. But there's a lot of that. But every chick goes back to that. Every chick, and, and you look at Tommy's Instagram, look at her friends, the friends that she's talking about. You can't tell me those chicks don't have just like a line going back to the freaking across the nation here of dudes just hitting them up. And these chicks, they use that, you know, to, I don't know, it's more like a self, it's like if you, if you feel bad about yourself, a self-esteem boost when they do this. So I don't know if she's serious. Here's what my whole thing, and I know I'm ranting, but that other dude that she was, um, uh, Vicky or whatever his name is, the soccer player, the guy running as an independent in California, that dude saw, looks like a solid dude. I mean, maybe he's got some issues. I don't know because obviously we don't, I don't know him personally or anything, and uh, Tommy would more than any of us. But that dude, I bet he didn't end things, at least at first. My initial impression when I read this and I saw that, looked like she ended things to try to go to somebody else. And then what happened was when that somebody else, whatever got him a little bit of something from her or realized that he wasn't or whatever the case may be, he probably didn't get something, I'll tell you that, because usually before she leaves him while she's you know, engaged to him, she's probably talking to this dude, knew him. I guarantee she knew him. I've seen it happen many times. This is how they, uh, women like her operate. Anyway, she goes to that guy, then that guy, hey, well, he's probably seeing a bunch of chicks or she finds out that chicks are talking to him or whatever, or he might not even be seeing them or maybe he did see them and they're trying to come back because he's probably a you know super high value type guy off of mail and he doesn't mean he's a good guy he could be just you know out doing his thing but anyway she gets that she sees that and then that dude just like blows her off doesn't even care and then she tries to go back to Ficky right or whatever his name is and then he probably doesn't doesn't want anything to do with it and I don't blame him if that's the case I know the first part's probably true maybe the second part is me you come back after that back in the day maybe but now that I know what I know, like it's like, hey, this ship sailed. I mean, you could do, you'll probably do the same thing, because it it seems like, and you know what the other thing is, it's never, there's never any a lot of them. I've seen a couple of chicks that have a lot of, you know, they self reflect. Okay, yeah, I made some mistakes. I've had girls come back to me and they're like, oh man, I made a mistake. We should have stuck it out. Hey, that's cool. You've but you you made your bed, and I'm glad you self reflected and you come to that realization. I mean, I've done the same thing over religion. That's where I'm at now is self-reflection because the common denominator, a lot of this it was me, even though I'm, you know, didn't make the mistakes, but there's certain things that I did that facilitated those mistakes on the other end. But it, uh, in Tommy's case, it doesn't seem like there's any self-reflection. It's just constant reflect, you know, cast the blame off on the dude 
or dudes or whatever. I'm going to call it a dude. I think it's another Chad or I call him Jody because I'm from the military. Another Jody that Ficky didn't know about. I'm going to call him Ficky or Fick, whatever, but he didn't know about and Jody was over there. He was uh, sliding in. He's, he's getting it in. And then uh, he ditched her and then she tried to go back and, hey, whatever. But you notice she doesn't, she's a, uh, She's not self-reflecting on herself or her friends. And if you look at her friends, hey, they don't look, she said they're respectable and successful, maybe, but the way they dress, it's like I see them at the bar, you know what I'm thinking? One, because they're hanging out at this place, but the way they're dressed, I'm thinking they're sluts. I'm thinking, or thoughts, or whatever you want to call them now. I call them, you know, sluts or ho hoes or whatever. I, that's how I see them. Don't get me wrong, they're physically attractive, but they're not somebody that I necessarily want to take back to mom, the way they were dressed on some of their Instagram stuff. Um, I think Tommy's probably not, she probably would be okay. Like, I think she, I don't know. But her and her friends on the Instagram, man, it just looks bad to me. It's not somebody that I would, you know, ascertain having a long lasting relationship. That's more like a really short term thing. So that's what kind of what she's projecting on there. I don't think a lot of girls get that. Like guys like myself and our, our age, I, my age anyway, I'm kind of looking, well, now it's like a one in a million thing for that, you know, more respectable woman. And when you dress like that and you're flaunting around this image that's not gonna last your entire life, I'll tell you that, you're almost at what they call the wall. You gotta have something else at the table. And if, granted, we, like I said, we might agree on things, but a lot of the way she agrees with me, you know, it's not very in-depth thought. And, but anyway, go, I see I'm going down these rabbit holes, but she's, I didn't see any self-reflection. just constantly blame the dudes. And there is a lot of pussies out there, I agree with her. There's you know lack of manhood and that has to go back with, I mean, I take it back to feminism and um, and a lot of uh, uh, the single family home, and we can go into that later. But not one thing that she talked about one having somebody of high moral character in regard, or you know, moral compass, or however she would, would like to phrase that. She didn't talk about that. She didn't talk about maybe the mistakes that her and her friends have. I, I didn't see anything like that. Any self reflection. It was just just projection of hate towards. Uh, unseen group of men, which I mean, I guess I've seen them, but I mean, all men throughout the, I was like, you know, the Midwest, and all, yeah, there is a lot of pussy dudes, especially, you know, all parts of the country, but there's also a lot of good guys. There are a lot of men. I've served with them. I've been around them. There's a lot of actual men that would, uh, you know, give their left testicle to have somebody that was actually loyal and, you know, a partner or whatnot in their life. Anyway, you know, that's my two cents. I know it's kind of rambled. But, you know, I kind of get a little heated over that. I mean, would I take her out? Yeah. Would I don't know if I'd take her home the way she's acting. I'm not that type of girl. But, Tommy, I hope you find what you, you're looking for. I hope there's, you know, you can find that high-value guy. I think you had him and you lost him, and now it's coming home the roost. Anyway, peace.